So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jiang Gao from Tsinghua University. Uh, today I will introduce our work, Citron, Distributed Range Log Management with One-Sided RDMA. This is joint work with my colleagues and guided by Professor Lu and Professor Shu. So imagine any kind of storage systems, for example, file systems, key value stores, and databases. They provide users with various interfaces, but they eventually translate users' requests into accesses to ranges on the storage address space. For example, the system might need to access data of a, at a certain offset in a file of a certain size to retrieve a key value record or relational database record. So for concurrency safety, we need to ensure that different clients do not simultaneously access overlapping ranges of the same address space. Otherwise, they can cause risk conditions and thus unexpected outputs. The solution is what we call the range lock, which grants mutual exclusion for the range to be accessed. For example, if two ranges, two ranges overlap, they are mutual exclusive and cannot be acquired together. And most all of these storage systems are now distributed, in which the storage and the compute size are connected by a high-speed network like RDMA. Range lock, as a basic component of the storage system, is still an indispensable infrastructure in such systems, for example, in high-performance computing scenarios, the widely used file systems like Luster and BGFS. Previously, range locks are managed in a two-sided fashion. The clients send the requests to the server, and the server-side CPUs are responsible to process all the requests. Inside the server, it can employ many well-designed data structures for log management, such as the conventional red-black trees in the Linux, and recently proposed maple trees and log-free linked lists. However, we notice that this log management scheme can cause serious CPU bottleneck due to the high latencies from the requests queuing in the NIC and the low throughputs from the limited CPU resources. To solve this problem, we have one-sided RDMA, which can bypass server-side CPUs and thus have the potential to avoid the bottleneck. The problem now is how to achieve good performance. Trivially, we can just chop the whole address space into small pieces, for example, for kibibyte pages, and assign a mutex to each piece of the storage address space. This solution is attractive because we are familiar with mutexes. And prior studies have also, also demonstrated that distributed mutexes can be easily and effectively maintained with one-sided RDMA. But due to the range semantics, this solution will generate excessive network round trips because the mutexes need to be sequentially locked to avoid deadlocks. This will then lead to high latencies. Conversely, to avoid having to lock so many times, we can simply combine multiple mutexes into one. This avoids the latency problem, but a throughput problem arises. Because if we only want to lock a small range, we can still only acquire an oversized lock, which results in a waste and possibly false lock conflicts. This will lower the overall throughput. To enjoy the performance benefits of one-sided RDMA, while avoiding the drawbacks of these trivial approaches, we designed a Citron. Citron is an acronym for Efficient Dis Distributed Range Log Manager. It is essentially a comprehensive and complex log protocol, so we will only focus on its most important parts today. Here is a big picture of our work. Citron consists of two most important parts, a data structure for range log management and a matched protocol. We have a tree data structure located at the server-side memory for log management, and all clients will ac access the data structure following our log protocol uh, with RDMA verbs. We first translate ranges into nodes on the tree, and then employ the log protocol to resolve conflicts between different tree nodes. Now let's start from the data structure. The data structure is called the segment tree, which is a powerful data structure and the very basis of our entire work. It is a perfect tree in which each node represents a range. Here is an example where the tree is a binary tree. The root represents the entire range, and every other node each receives an equal share of its parent's range together with its sibling. If each node is a lock, then the segment tree essentially forms a multi-granularity lock structure. A famous conclusion is that any continuous range can be expressed by a combination of up to all log n segment tree nodes. So with the tree, you can effect effectively map a range to a set of tree nodes. 
Note that to lock a node, we do not necessarily need to lock all nodes whose range, range overlap with it. We just need to lock the node itself. However, we still face similar problems to what we have mentioned before when dis discussing the trivial one-sided solutions. If we choose to map the range precisely, we will get a throughput optimal solution. It has an obvious drawback. Locking that many nodes for a range can incur high latencies. In contrary, you can simply lock only one node that covers the requested range. The latency becomes low, but so does the throughput because there are false lock conflicts. Thanks to the segment tree, Citroen can now choose to make a powerful but simple trade-off by setting an upper bound to the number of nodes to lock, up to two in our Im implementation by default. In practice, this makes a huge difference in locking only one node because we can properly select the nodes with a knapsack algorithm to minimize the size of locked but unwanted range. Evaluation shows that compared to locking only one node, locking up to two can reduce 96% of the false lock conflicts. As a result, we can effectively and efficiently map any range into only a few tree nodes, optimizing for both throughput and latency. By, uh, by locking the selected nodes one by one, we will get a we will get a range lock as we want. So we will now discuss how to execute the lock protocol to lock one certain node, which we call the, de the desired node. We observe that whatever its position, the desired node's represented range overlaps only with its ancestors and descendants, and of, co of course itself. So when we lock a node, we will need to synchronize with other nodes because other clients can decide to lock at these nodes and conflict with the current one. So this diagram, at the right is an abstract demos demonstrating all the nodes we, need, we need to synchronize with. Our approach in designing the lock protocol is as follows. We modify the content of the tree nodes to notify other clients and also detect notification from other clients. In practice, we can decompose the whole protocol into a total of five tasks. Locking the desired node itself, which is one, and synchronize with other nodes with notification and detection, which are four. We know that each of these tasks can be done intuitively with a couple of RDMA verbs. The verbs we use are called extended atomics, which are supported by off-the-shelf NICs. They work similarly to conventional RDMA atomics, but they have extra bit masks as parameters. As a result, the extended compare and swap operates only on user-designated bits in the eight bytes, while the extended fetch and add can split the eight bytes into multiple fields and add separately within each field. Powered by extended atomics, we can design a format for nodes in the segment tree. Specifically, we use compare and swap to manipulate, to manipulate leave nodes, which are bitmaps, and each bit represents the lock state of the corresponding storage unit. We use fetch and add to manipulate, to manipulate internal nodes, which are split into multiple fields to maintain virtual lock queues, similar to Lamport's bakery algorithm. Now we elaborate on how to lock the desired node by performing the five synchronization tasks. Task one, lock the desired node itself. The method depends on the node's position. If the node is a leaf, we will use extended compare and swap to set the corresponding bits. Otherwise, the node is internal. We first enter the virtual queue by incrementing its a field called the rear and wait for my turn by pulling the head until it matches the rear value we got, which means I am now the first place in the virtual queue. Task two, notify the descendants. This is done simply by setting a flag called the occupied of the desired node itself using one fetch and add. The occupied flag prevents other clients from locking the desired node descendant, and this will be done in task three. The clients read the ancestor nodes and check checks their occupied flags. If there is an occupied ancestor, then someone must have set a flag in its task two so I must wait for it. The fourth task is to notify the ancestors. To do this, we have another pair of counters in the internal nodes that maintain a virtual queue for their descendants. These fields are called D head and D rear, where D is, uh, stands for descendant. We increment the ancestor's D rear field to enter its descendant queue. Now to ensure that conflicting clients at the desired node's ancestors can detect me, the protocol also requires them to detect conflicts at descendants in task five. This is done by polling the desired node's d head and d rear counters until they are equal, which means we must wait until there are no conflicts 
at the sentence, and the descendant queue gets emptied. So here is a summary of the five tasks. Um, these tasks all operate on a segment tree for which we have different formats for internal nodes and leaf nodes. Leaves are bitmaps whose each bit corresponds to a unit of storage, for example, a page, while internal nodes are split into multiple fields, including occupied head and rear and D head and D rear. They together reside in an eight byte atomic variable. And this table lists the task goals, verbs, and objectives. You can see that Citroen performs notification with extended fetch and add, and detection with RDMA reads. Synchronization with ancestor nodes is done at those ancestors, but that with descendants is only done at the desired node itself. Now we have just discussed the lock procedure. The unlock procedure is straightforward. It kind of reverses the modifications done when we acquire the lock. Because we have entered the lock queue of the desired node and the descendant queues of its ancestors, we need to quit these queues by incrementing their head counters. Also, we need to clear the occupy flags we set and unset the related bits in the bitmap of leaf nodes. To ensure correctness and performance, we have made several important designs, including timing-based synchronization and a stride notification mechanism. On top of them, we also have many supportive designs, such as runtime scaling up and parameter tuning. Please refer to our paper for more details. So by now, we have finished with all the main designs of Citron. Next, I will present the experiment results. We run the experiments in a cluster of four machines, one as the server and the other three as clients. We compare Citron with five baseline systems in our paper. So for, for clarity here, we only use a CPU-centric and a one-sided RDMA-based solution as our examples. So under normal and skilled workloads, both application and micro benchmark, Citron has much better performance and scalability than a two-sided baseline. It boosts the throughput by up to 140% and reduces the tail latencies by up to 89%. The main reason is that Citron bypasses the server-side CPUs, thus eliminating the queuing latencies at the server-side in CPU-centric baselines. As for the trivial one-sided RDMA baseline that assigns a mutex to each storage unit, Citron unfortunately performs worse than it when the range size is one. But this means the workload is mutex only. It is reasonable that Citron as a range lock manager performs worse than a dedicated mutex manager. However, when the range size is larger, there can be unaligned ranges. The baseline will now cause false lock conflicts and unnecessary weights. Therefore, suboptimal throughput and latency compared to Citroen. We also have some other evaluation results. For example, Citroen's median latencies are similar to existing approaches, but Citroen experiences uh, tail latencies order of magnitudes lower than them. Uh, we have also some uh, evaluation results other than performance itself. For example, the false conflict rates and the local board rates are also acceptably low and Citron can quickly adapt to storage resource, uh, uh, adapt to changes in sizes of the storage resource. This is the conclusion of, uh, of our work. First, we designed Citron, a distributed range lock manager with all, only one-sided RDMA to acquire and release lock, locks. Citron translates ranges into RDMA-friendly mutexes with a segment tree and uses RDMA extended, uh, extended atomics to perform synchronization. Finally, Citron achieves, achieves overall higher performance than both two-sided and existing one-sided trivial baselines. My presentation finishes here. Thank you for listening, and I'm open to questions.